What's good, Beast Hounds? It's your boy, Kick and Raid. Welcome to day 10 of the Ready, Set, Beast advent calendar. 15 sleeps till Christmas. Can you believe that? Yesterday, we were talking about choosing to do hard things and embracing the suck. Today, I have some suck for you to embrace. Hill sprints. Hill sprints are my favorite cardio. Why? Because I hate running. I hate running so, so bad. I recently had to run flat out for an hour on a treadmill. It was boring. It injured me. It served no purpose other than to make me slightly better at running for an hour. Ugh. Hill sprints, however, are magical. It's high intensity interval training, so that means several things. One, burns a lot of calories. Two, it's gonna rapidly increase your cardiovascular fitness. And three, it's over quick. And also, if you're doing it right, it's guaranteed to really, really suck. Really, really suck, really bad. I love hill sprints because I can get the same benefit as an hour's run in 10 minutes. I don't have to invest the time, I don't have to invest the miles. I love hill sprints because they make you really fit really fast. It's all about intensity. Pushing the boundaries of your capacity is gonna make you fit faster than if you're going steady for longer. And another benefit, unlike exercise-based EMOMs, there's nothing to learn. Running is a completely natural behavior. And yes, some people suck at running, but not to the degree that it's unsafe for them to do so. And hill sprints are a great teacher. As you get exhausted, you will naturally find your natural gait as your body desperately tries to conserve energy and you desperately try to expend it. It's awesome, safe for pretty much everyone, requires no equipment, and again, absolutely magic in that it always sucks. When you first start, you won't believe how your heart will beat, your lungs will burn, your mind will complain, but within a few sessions, you'll be fitter. You'll have better technique, you'll be able to push yourself harder, but it doesn't get easier. Oh no, it gets worse, because now you're fitter, and you're better at running, and you can push yourself harder, so it sucks more. It's self-regulating, and it's wonderful. I'm sure you're absolutely dying to give it a go by now, if you haven't already, and you'll certainly be dying after, so let me give you a few ideas of ways that you can integrate it into your training, or spice it up, if you already have. I'd recommend starting off EMOM style, so find a hill with a decent incline, find a section of it that you can cover in around 20 seconds if you full tilt boogie, balls to the wall, screaming sprint up it. Now your job is to peg it up that hill every time the minute comes around, holding nothing back. Once you reach the top, you can jog, walk back down, and then you have the remainder of that minute to rest before the next sprint. I like this layout because it will encourage you to really go hell for leather, which has to be the point to see the benefits. If you don't go hell for leather, you aren't gonna get enough rest time at the bottom of the hill. Rest is a great incentive. So start with maybe six of these. As you get better, you can make your hill longer, make your interval shorter, do more rounds. I don't think you need to do more than 12. I don't think you can keep up the necessary intensity for much longer than that. If you can do more than 12, you probably just need to find a longer hill or a steeper incline. Once you've got some hill sprint sessions under your belt, you can do fun things like set an eight minute timer and see how many sprints you can get in that time, and the next time, beat that number. Something else I like to do is put exercises at the top. So, you know how in movies, the good guy always like runs to the main fight? This is training for that. You have to get up there as fast as possible and still have the capacity to work. I also sometimes like to train animal movement patterns on the way down. So you sprint up the hill and then bear crawl or duck walk or Spider-Man your way back down. That's pretty evil, that's pretty evil. But the evilest of all, the worst combo I have yet to come up with, was a set of trap bar deadlifts at the bottom of the hill, a hill sprint, ultimate burpees at the top of the hill, and then reverse bear crawl on the way down. That was mean, that's nasty. That's one of those, uh, what psychopath planned this moments? And I'm like, Rrr. I don't think you need to worry about the frequency of hill sprints. For some years, I did them three times a week and I was in fine fettle, but I do think you need to be careful about where you put them in your training plan. For a long time, I put them at the beginning of basically every session, and I did that because, like most people, I think cardio is boring and I wanted it out of the way. However, they're an all-out max effort, so if you go into your training session fresh and then immediately do a max effort something, what do you think you have left in the tank for the kind of training that builds muscle or skills or whatever your goals are? 
You should always prioritize whatever you want to get best at at the beginning of your training session. So new skills, weak points. Once I had that light bulb moment, which took too long by the way, my strength and my fitness really took off. It doesn't matter if you're already fatigued going into hill sprints because you still have to give 100%. There's just less of you left to give. That intensity is the only thing that really matters. And no matter how fresh you start, you'll still be knackered at the finish, so it makes little difference. I hope this has given you some ideas on how to spice up your cardio. There's definitely some level of this that you can take away and implement today. Some suck to embrace, so choose your hard thing and go do it, my friend. Your body, your mind will appreciate it and they will reward you. Have a great day, get them gains, be well.